Good morning, Isle of Faith. Good morning. Welcome to worship. This is the time we set aside each week to gather together and encounter God in a very real and special way. You know, it's something about encountering God, and I like to call it that, an encounter with God. It's both corporate as a church and also individual. So I want y'all to think about that today as we're listening to the music, hearing the scripture, and hearing the testimonies that you will hear today. Think about how do you personally experience God corporately with friends, family, and in church, and how do you experience God personally? And see if something jumps out at you. So thank you for that. I'm glad you're here to worship with us. Don't forget, every Wednesday evening, we meet right here in this place for worship, and we celebrate Holy Communion, and we get to meet God there as well. And it's a wonderful time midweek to meet, fellowship, and just rest in the love of God. So I hope to see you on Wednesday nights. Then you can come back the next night, because why not? 6.15 to 7.15 in the fellowship hall. And you haven't missed anything. We just did a brief introduction last week. This is week one of the study on the book of Revelation. No S. Revelation. One revelation. So come on Thursday and you'll hear about that. It's a very interesting book. We're going to talk about it in a way that allays any fears. And you will understand it as a book of hope by the time we're done. So I hope you'll come. The scripture today, if you want to grab your Bible or break out your phone, is from Luke 24, 13 through 35. It's kind of long, but it's a good story, and you've got to hear all of it. Let's pray. Lord, may the word we share today be written in our hearts and lived out in our lives, so that we may know you when we see you and proclaim you when we have that opportunity. Great confidence of the Holy Spirit we share in this word. Amen. Luke 24, 13 through 35. On that same day, two disciples were traveling to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking to each other about everything that had happened. While they were discussing these things, Jesus himself arrived and joined them on their journey. They were prevented from recognizing him. He said to them, What are you talking about as you walk along? They stopped, their faces downcast. The one named Cleopas replied, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who is unaware of the things that have taken place there over the last few days? He said to them, What things? They said to him, The things about Jesus of Nazareth. Because of his powerful deeds and words, he was recognized by God and all the people as a prophet. But our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped he was the one who would redeem Israel. All of these things happened three days ago, but there's more. Some women from our group have left us stunned. They went to the tomb early this morning and did not find his body. They came to us saying that, They had even seen a vision of angels who told them he is alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women said. They didn't see him. Then Jesus said to them, You foolish people, your dull minds keep you from believing all that the prophets talked about. Wasn't it necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then he interpreted for them, the things written about himself and all the scriptures, starting with Moses going through all the prophets. When they came to Emmaus, he acted as if he was going ahead. But they urged him, saying, Stay with us. It's nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. After he took his seat at the table with them, he took the bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts on fire when he spoke to us along the road and when he explained the scriptures for us? They got up right then and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying to each other, The Lord really has risen. He appeared to Simon. Then the two disciples described what had happened along the road and how Jesus was made known to them as he broke the bread. It's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So this is Witness and Ministry Sunday. 
And this scripture is so appropriate because when you serve God in the ministries of the church, it's like we're on the road with Jesus, right? He's with us. He's with us when we're, we take our retreats, wherever that may be. He's with us when we work at our festivals at the Pumpkin Patch at, and on Sunday morning. Anytime we gather and we're ministering to the community, what we want is for Jesus to be revealed for people not just to see the church, but to know Jesus through our ministries. So I'm going to invite Mike Lowry to come up, and he's going to talk a little bit about a ministry that he was involved with that happens to have something to do with the scripture we read. Morning. I want to restate what Pastor Will said in a little bit different terms because I find it so powerful and so important. The Cleopas, also known as Simon, walked, an un, uh, walked with an unnamed traveler on the road to Emmaus. On that journey, he encountered a, a person he didn't know, a stranger to them. And that person asked, what has happened in Jerusalem in the last few days? I hear so much. What's going on? And they're absolutely amazed. They can't believe that he doesn't know, and so they recount to him the events. Cleopas, in fact, describes the fact that there was a trial, there was a crucifixion, there was a burial, the discovery of an empty tomb. The unnamed man who had joined them it then began to explain the writings to them that had preceded them, the writings of Moses, the scripture that, that described the foretelling of what was to come. And then he had a meal with them. In that meal, he sat down and broke bread. And it was during that time it was revealed to them that the unnamed man was in fact Jesus who then disappeared. This is so important because it also symbolizes the Last Supper with breaking bread, those folks. My name is Mike Lowry. I went on the walk to Emmaus, number 76. I sat at the table of Peter, and I worship and serve at Isle of Faith United Methodist Church. I've been asked to share with you what Emmaus was or what it meant to me. And I really can only do it as one person, and one person doesn't do it justice. You see, no two walks are the same, no two lives are the same, and no two experiences are the same. And I believe as Christians, one of the things that we struggle with, as we do in other things in our lives, is how do I put my faith into action? What's the next step for me? What do I do as a Christian? And sometimes we ask ourselves, is this it? Is going to church and, and an occasional act of kindness and act of Christianity all there is to it? Emmaus is not a club. It's not a secret society. It's not a gathering. In fact, it's the exact opposite, which is why I'm here today, is to invite each and every one of you to experience this. Emmaus is that important. I mean, I never realized that. I was asked twice to go before I ever said, yes, I'll go. I'll see what it's like. And frankly, I went at the urging of my wife because she wanted to be, be part of the experience because of what she had heard. Boy, am I thankful that I did that. It's a life-changing event. What you hope to find in life is, who am I and what am I going to do with my life? By going to Emmaus, you won't find answers given to you. You won't find a roadmap or a blueprint or what to do next. But what you will find is an opportunity to learn from God what his plan may be for you and what that next step may be for you. And that's between you and God. A person can't give you that. A person can't stand up in front of you and say, next you need to do this and then do this and then do this because that's not the way God works. He works in individuals. It's a powerful experience, one that I can't really describe other than to say, I have witnessed things happen there that I 
really can't explain other than to see the power of God working through people. And I'll tell you, it works two ways. I've had friends who truthfully will tell me that I've been a Christian since I was a small child. I know God. I know Christ. And I'm not sure Emmaus can do anything for me. I can't answer that for them. But I can tell you this, that being there, and I've, after my walk, I have worked every walk since then. And I have gained experience, and I've gained knowledge, and I've seen things at every walk that amaze me, and I've grown stronger through each walk. But I've also seen people who were placed at the walks, not because they needed something in their lives, but because somebody at that walk needed something from them. Maybe that's why you should be at the walk, because someone is looking for someone else who can touch their heart, who can show them a way, who can help them find that plan for themselves. The whole purpose is to help you get on the road. It's not to tell you what to do on the road. It's to help you get on the road. God will reveal to you what you do once you get on the road. I, 500 years ago, I used to coach high school football. And our mantra that we would tell our kids was a simple one, and that was, what if I could guarantee you a win every time you went on the football field? Would you take that? Well, I could. If you walk out and give 100%, it doesn't matter what the scoreboard says. If you gave 100%, you will win every single game because when you walk off that field, you will realize that you gave everything that you had. You had nothing else to give. And that makes you a winner. So I'll say to you folks, what if I could guarantee you three days that will change your life? Would you take it? I can guarantee that. So what I'd ask you to do when we leave here is talk to your friends, talk to your neighbors, talk to anybody in here. Come see me and say, have you been to Emmaus? And if you have, what did it mean to you? And where are you now? And where is this load, road led you to be? I think that you will find that it will lead you to the road to Emmaus. De Glorious. And now we're going to have a, a video a testimony of our Palm Festival.
Okay, now it's my turn. So, these aren't my notes. <laughs> um, yeah, I was a little caught off guard by the whole Emmaus thing to start out, but I think God, the Spirit, tied it in for me. Um, we were talking about the walk to Emmaus, and then I was thinking, well, Palm Sunday Festival, that's a weird segue. But um, as I read further down in Luke, um, Jesus says, I go to heaven so that the Holy Spirit will come and he'll reside within you. And so I felt like me talking about Palm Sunday, that's where I felt the Spirit leading me. And um, the reason we do Palm Sunday and the reason we um, can do the work is because the Spirit has been given to us to do God's work. And um, when Jude asked me to talk, God gave me a word that I thought I should share, and it was uh, Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So I thought it was a little bit weird of a kind of scripture, but what, it sh what he showed me through that scripture was seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. And a lot of times in scripture, righteousness means our right standing with God. But in this scripture, it means and his justice his justice to be proclaimed throughout the kingdom. And so when I was, when we were doing Palm Sunday Festival and as we're living life, Rob and I, we, we have this kind of, uh, we've adopted this mentality to seek first God's kingdom, no matter what the cost, and to see him in everything and to allow him to work in and through us in every aspect of our lives. And so I was sitting out at Palm Sunday, the festival, and I wasn't really like volunteering at one specific place and I think that was God's divine appointment for me because I met this lady and um, she was just at a place in her life where she was not attending a church, she doesn't have anybody to encourage her in her walk, but she's a believer. And um, she needed to hear at that moment that somebody believed what she believed and that God was real and that he was speaking. She, he was speaking to her, he was speaking to me, and we had just an amazing conversation about God working through us to do miraculous things or him just touching us in miraculous ways. And um, I can't even, I mean, we, we talked about all sorts of things. It was just amazing. But just to be there, to be encouraged by her and to encourage her um, and to live life with this lady that I didn't know and I could have just talked about nothing, you know. Oh, the, the weather's nice. Oh, you know, this is such a great festival. It's, it's, it's you know, cool. But no, I got introduced to her by Kim Larson, and we just, I don't know, it was just a divine appointment. And it, it, if I wouldn't, if we wouldn't have allowed the spirit to move, then we wouldn't have encouraged each other. And so that's what I feel like I was supposed to come up here and share with you, is that in every aspect of, as we go through our lives, if we allow the spirit to move and to, to lead our conversations, then we can, it'll open the doors to, just amazing things. And so um, the Palm Sunday Festival, it was a blessing. And then even after that, Rob and I went home and like we were just so filled with the spirit that the people across the way from us, we just started talking to them. And the spirit led to for us to talk about other things and we ended up praying together. And it's just, it's a lifestyle. The spirit leads and he moves. And as Mike was saying, we can't tell you what God's leading you to do, but he has you here and he's leading you to do something. And so what is that? You in every aspect, every point of your life, you have to say, God, what do you have for me? What do you want for me? I want to serve you with my whole life. So we have to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness because he deserves to be glorified throughout the nations, here and everywhere. And he calls us because we're alive. He's calling us to do those things. Um, so that was the word. It's Matthew 6, 33. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Hi, I'm Jude Allen, and I uh, just wanted to share um, a little bit about uh, the festival. And I've only got a few minutes, but um, I will tell you this, that um, any time in ministry, I think as we go to minister to other people that God is ministering to us. And I kind of wanted to share a little vulnerably what God kind of taught me through the festival. And um, I'm beginning to love God's discipline for me because he's changing me, because he's, he doesn't do it in shame or guilt, but he does it because he loves me. And so um, just wanted to share just for a second. I went to the Youth Pastor Summit 
And um, it was such a blessing right in the middle of Palm Sunday Festival planning that and organizing that. And um, a speaker asked the question, are you interruptible? And there was something in my spirit that just like lit on fire and I knew that God was going to unravel that revelation and what that meant for me. So as I came back, I was so on fire from, you know, just from being there with being and Rob and Jackie and some of the other leaders. And um, I was planning, going from point A to B, which is, I think, what um, a lot of us do. We, we know what we have to do, and we're going, we need to do this. I've, I'm very creative, but I'm very organized at the same time. I'm equally both, which just makes me crazy. But um, so I was walking down the hall, and um, I asked what most people ask, how are you doing? It was a couple from the church. And I was kind of expecting the financer, you know, because I was thinking, this is what I have to do. I have to do A, B, C, D, E. And they started talking to me about their family and their life and just stuff that was going on with them. And I found myself, my mind was going 100 miles per hour because I was thinking, look, I'm getting ready for a festival. This is really important. And so God just asked the question to me, can I interrupt you right now? And all of a sudden, it was just like the spirit fell on me and I just relaxed. And I bet you that this couple saw it in my face because my brain stopped and I didn't care at that second that I was the to-do list I had to do. And I looked in that couple's eyes and I listened to their hearts. I saw them the way that Jesus saw them. And it was such a breakthrough for me. And God's asking me the question, us the question, because ministry, I know I'm on staff, but we're all ministers of God. You're a minister of God at your home, in your job, wherever you go, you are a minister of God. And so the question is, as in ministry, are we ministering to people? Because as awesome as the festival is, and it will be awesome next year and the year after, what matters is the people. Because people do not interrupt our ministry. People are our ministry. So as we're preparing our Sunday school lessons, as we're preparing for United Methodist Men, as we're doing the pumpkin patch, we can't lose sight that we are here to minister God's love to God's people, and he loves them. And all throughout the Bible, you see where Jesus, here Jesus is, is going on the way to his death, preparing that, and he is interrupted time after time after time. It says, on the way. And then after that, it says stories of the woman with the issue of blood, people saying, will you come heal my son, heal my daughter? He cast out the demons from the man, all on his way to go to the cross to die for us. There were opportunities that was brought forth for God to minister to his people. And so I am so thrilled that God, I mean, he just, man, he kicked my tail. I tell Rod that all the time. God just kicks my tail all the time. But he does that because he loves me. And he does that as a church because he loves us. So I just pray that in ministry that we realize that ministry is about each other and ministering to each other. We had over 300 people people at the festival, over a hundred volunteers. And again, I just want to share with you to end that scripture that was in, um, in the end of that slide. And it says, we continually remember the work produced by your faith, your labor prompted by your love, and your endurance motivated by your hope in Jesus. Thank you. Let's pray. Lord God, we are so grateful that You've given us a model for life and for love. And you know, as Jude said, and as Mike witnessed, what we may call interruptions, you looked at as your call. It's who you were. You were the kind of God that walked this earth and took every opportunity to be interrupted, to hear the stories of your followers, to heal love, and ultimately to sacrifice. So we leave here today as people with open hearts and open ears that we may look for opportunities to allow you to break into our everyday lives so we can be agents of the miraculous love of Jesus Christ. We claim today and every day in the name of this wonderful, loving, healing Lord. Amen. 
Join hands with the neighbor, raise them high, receive this benediction. We go as disciples of Christ. We know we're on a journey, Lord, and we have open eyes. We want you to interrupt our lives so we may be storytellers of salvation. We go with the strength of the Spirit. We go in peace. Amen.